All right, I wanna talk about hypothesis tests using the TI-84, but I'm gonna focus on two methods to find the p-value in the test statistic. I'm gonna show you guys an easy method, and I'm gonna show you guys a hard method. And both of these methods have their virtues. It's actually important to know both of these methods. The hard method has a lot of important ideas that you need to understand. And also you need to know what method your teacher wants you to use. So let's get to it. First, let's try to understand the question. In 1990, the mean height of women 20 years of age or older was 63.7 inches. And let's jump to this. Suppose that a random sample of 45 women who are 20 years of age or older today results in a mean height of 63.9 inches and a sample standard deviation of 0.89 inches. Are women taller today is the hypothesis test that we wanna check. Notice that it says taller. That tells us that the alternative hypothesis is a right tail test. Why would we think that women are taller? Well, the mean of 45 women today was 63.9. Whereas in 1990, it was 63.7. So we have reason to believe that women are taller. All right, so mu represents the mean height of women age 20 or older today. That's an important word. Our focus is on women today and whether or not they are taller. So let's get into the hard method first. The hard way, use TCDF to find the p-value, find the p-value in test statistic. So if I draw a normal curve and put the mean in the middle, which is 63.7, that is assumed to be true, that's from 1990. That That is the assumption that women are 63.7 inches tall on average. If we put 63.9 here, that's the sample mean, and we find the shaded region to the right because we're trying to see if women got taller, so we shade to the right, and we call this the p-value. Now since we're dealing with the mean of 45 women, we have the standard error instead of just the standard deviation because we're now dealing with a sampling distribution. So we're trying to actually find the probability that x bar is greater than or equal to 63.9. That's the sample mean, the mean of the 45 women. We want to know if the mean is greater than 63.9. So this distribution is the distribution of all the sample means. And we want to see what's the probability that a sample is 63.9 or bigger. That one sample out of all of the sample means. So that is the sampling distribution. So we can actually call this the sampling distribution. Now 63.9, we want to convert that to a t-score. So we're going to actually just say 63.9 minus the mean, 63.7, and divide by the standard error, which is 0 0.89, divided by square root of 45. We need to convert 63.9 to a relative score, relative to the mean and standard error. So that's why we do this. And the only reason we do this is because TCDF, only allows three parameters, the lower, the upper, and then the degrees of freedom. It doesn't allow you to plug in the mean and the standard error. So this is gonna become TCDF of 63.9 minus 63.7 divided by 0 0.89 over square root of 45, comma, 9999, because this shaded region goes infinitely far to the right. And then the degrees of freedom, which is N minus one, so that's 44, because the sample size is 45. So let's plug this in. So we go to second distribution, TCDF, 63.9. Well, actually, before I do this, I should find 63.9 minus 63.7. Press enter and then divide it by 0.89 divided by square root of 45. Now, that was very tricky. To find this is very difficult because that's a complex fraction. So I found it. It's 1.50746. I can store that into a variable x if I want. So now X is that number. So now when I do second distribution, TCDF, I can actually put X comma 999999. I'm putting 999999 to represent infinity because this goes to infinity once again. And then I'm gonna put 44. So this equals to 0 0.0694 if we round it. So what's that called? The p-value. That's really what we need. The test statistic was 1.5 but the p-value is what we look to in order to make our conclusion. So that's the hard way to do it. That required you to understand TCDF, the fact that you're dealing with a mean, a sample mean, the standard error, a visual of what the p-value is. Let's try the easy method now. What we're gonna do is go to stat, test, and t-test. 
So let's pull up the calculator. So in the calculator, when you pull it up, you're gonna go to stat, tests, t-test. And it's gonna ask for these things. Now mu sub zero, you're gonna plug in the hypothesized mean, which was 63.7. For the sample mean, it's 63.9. For the sample standard deviation, it's 0.89. And the sample size is 45. And look what it gives us. A test statistic of T equals to 1.5075 and a p-value of 0.0694. Now take a look at that p-value. Does it look familiar? Let's scroll up. 0 0.0694, 0 0.0694. We get the same answer. All right. So that's how you find the p-value the easy way and the hard way on a TI-84.